Hi, Tom Walls, Carbide Processors. Been a I want to talk about brazing again. Um, two things. A lot of you in the, in, the, in the tool business are excellent mechanically. It's as though you were born with a wrench in one hand and a micrometer in the other. But you maybe don't have the chemical background. In brazing, and there's a technique in brazing. This is because I got two calls about this sort of thing today. You take brazing as joining two materials with a third dissimilar material. In this case, the guy was brazing in a knot, brazing a, a, a carbide drill flute uh, in a notch. And they're having trouble with it. And what they do is they experiment, put it together, braze it, experiment, put it together, braze it. What I suggested is the same thing you do when a machine isn't working. Machine isn't working, you try a couple of things, check the power, see if it's plugged in, um, hit the reset button, whatever. But if it's broken, you start taking it apart and you examine the parts and you look for maybe uh, you look for maybe signs of arcing in the electrical, uh, you look for something jammed, you look for something out of place, but you start taking it apart, you check the various parts. Um, you can do the same thing with brazing, and it's not a bad idea at all. If you're joining two parts and you're having trouble because the braze joint isn't holding, take the two pieces apart. If you're using a tri-metal, you're going to need a little bit of wire, a little tiny bit, uh, there's a hand. Figure the hand is your carbide piece. Use a piece of wire about it, the distance between my thumb and my forefinger there. Real small piece. Put a big glob of flux in here in the middle. Oops, there's the middle. In the middle, put a piece of braze alloy wire about that big and then heat it up. And then what you want to do is you want to see how far out it flows. It should flow out pretty, it should flow out a long ways and it should flow out pretty evenly um, either in an oval or in a circle. Um, if it forms a hump in the middle then you've got a problem. So you do that on the carbide side, you do that on the steel side. If neither one, if, if both of those work, if both of them you get a good flow out then you should have a good braze joint. If you don't give me a call we'll work on it from there. But it can be a huge benefit instead of instead of trying something, trying a new cleaning method, a different flux or whatever, putting them together and trying it where you can't see what you're doing. If you do it this way with a little piece of braze alloy and a lot of flux in the middle, heat it up, then you can see what's happening right there and you can test the, test the surface conditions. Um, it's the same thing you do if you had to take a machine apart. You take it apart, you check it, you inspect it, the whole thing. So. If you do have a brazing problem, or if you're working on better brazing, try that. It can be a tremendously valuable tool. That's it. I think my frozen pizza is about ready here at home, so I'm going to go check on it. Thank you. Bye.